Welcome back to Windows Fixer. Today we're talking about something really important, how to enable Secure Boot and TPM 2.0 on your system. And not just that, if these options are missing or unavailable on your hardware, I'll explain what you should do next and which generation of hardware is actually needed for these security features. Before we start the actual setup, let's first talk about how to enter the BIOS, because some people might get confused. If you're using Windows 10 or Windows 11 and your system is already installed in UEFI mode, there's an easy way to enter BIOS straight from Windows itself. Here's how you can do it. Press Windows plus I on your keyboard to open settings. Then go to Windows Update. Inside Windows Update, click on Advanced Options. Scroll down and find Recovery and click on it. Now under the Recovery Options, click on Advanced Startup and press Restart Now. Your PC will reboot into a blue screen menu. From there, select Troubleshoot, then Advanced Options, and finally UEFI Firmware Settings. Click Restart, and your system will boot straight into the BIOS. But, very important, if your Windows was installed in Legacy or BIOS mode, switching it to UEFI directly from BIOS settings will break your Windows installation. It won't boot because UEFI mode requires your disk to be formatted as GPT, while Legacy uses MBR. So before changing anything, first confirm if your PC actually supports UEFI. If it does, I'll leave a link to a video tutorial in the description that shows you how to safely convert MBR to GPT without losing your Windows installation. Make sure to watch and follow that guide first. After converting successfully, you can safely enable UEFI mode without any issues. All right, now that you're inside the BIOS, let's move forward. I'm using a Ryzen 5 3600 processor with a B450M Pro VDH Max motherboard. Keep in mind your motherboard might have a slightly different BIOS layout, so don't worry if things look a little different for you. On my board, TPM is located inside the security tab. From there, go into computing. That's where you'll find the option to enable TPM 2.0. It might be named something like AMD, FTPM, or Intel PTT, depending on your processor brand. Just make sure it's enabled. For Secure Boot, you'll find it inside the Advanced tab, under something called Windows OS Configuration. However, and this is important, if Secure Boot is missing completely, it usually means your BIOS is still running in CSM mode. Secure Boot only appears when your system is set to pure UEFI. In my case, the settings for CSM and Secure Boot are located in the same section, so it's easy to disable CSM and switch to UEFI. But on your motherboard, CSM might be hidden somewhere else, sometimes under Boot Settings or even a separate Compatibility Support section. If you find CSM, disable it or switch to UEFI Boot Mode manually. After that, Secure Boot will automatically show up and you can enable it properly. If you don't find TPM 2.0 or Secure Boot, even after switching everything, that means your hardware might simply be too old. In that case, the best thing to do is stick with Windows 10. It's still getting support, it's stable, and you won't have to worry about missing features or breaking anything. Just for reference, if you're using an Intel system, you'll need at least an 8th gen processor or newer to properly support Secure Boot and TPM 2.0. If you're on AMD, you'll need a Ryzen 2000 series or newer. Anything older than that might technically run Windows 11 with tricks, but it's not going to be reliable for daily use. However, if you still really want to install Windows 11 even on unsupported hardware, I've made a separate guide for that too. You can click on the I button at the top of this video or check the link in the description to watch it. But keep this in mind, installing Windows 11 unofficially means you could run into some serious issues later. For example, games like Valorant won't even launch without Secure Boot and TPM 2.0 enabled. Not only that, but many modern apps and security features will also fail to work properly without these requirements. So if gaming or security is important for you, it's better to stay on officially supported hardware for Windows 11. Alright, that wraps up today's guide. Hope this video made everything super clear and easy to follow. If it helped you out even a little, please consider liking the video and subscribing to Windows Fixer. It really helps me keep making more simple tutorials like this for you. This is Windows Fixer, and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy troubleshooting and take care.